their match versus G2. Patrick, of course, almost ascending a Super Saiyan on that Ezreal performance. Wasn't quite able to close it out, but it might be a different story here against Misfits. The final ban coming out will be the Cat. And now time to see what the first pick on the side of OG will be. Aurelia Aatrox is still left open. We saw Nuketuck grab that one last time around and uh, flank it into the mid lane position. Didn't expect this, though. Interesting. Rise, of course, historically an incredibly powerful pick in the hands of Nuketuck. Even when he was on losing lineups, his rise was terrifying. We'll go to the hands of Alfari, though. We will have to find out. The nature of Flex, of course, still an option. But Aurelia and Aatrox, both up and available. The other power picks you mentioned. I have to expect that Origin has something up their sleeve that they knew exactly the type of power that they were trading over to Misfits here. I personally am very scared that your priority pick would be Rise when you have a lot of firepower still left open, like an Aurelia, who seems so much higher on everyone's priority list in the LEC. But there's got to be something special. We'll see the adjustment is. Time to find out taking their time on the second pick. Will they try to take away one half of the Lovers duo? You could grab the Zaya right now if you wanted. Limit the options there. The Lux taken away though, a little bit uh, uh, unfortunate as that would be the backup option in the event that Rakan was They're going to do it. Aatrox now locked in. This could of course go into the jungle for those of you who did not watch the TCL or the MSI plans. When we look at Kyrie, we know him for his Kindred. We know him for his Karthus. Everything else did not play a ton. So if he does want to go for the Aatrox jungle, this will be a relatively new look for him overall. And I feel like both teams knew exactly what was going to happen here from draft phase. So nothing should be very surprising. I had a question of, is Misfits going to grab both the Aatrox and Aurelia? Yeah, they can still flex them both ways, but now Origin get a good look at both the solo laners from Misfits and they can decide kind of what their secret weapon is going to be against those picks. Um, but right now, it looks like Origin's game plan is have so much priority in that bot lane. And now with the rise, you know, post tier, post blue, when he gets priority, you can start throwing him down at that bot lane with the Realm Warp, Ooh. and maybe we start having a party down there. And they were willing to give up two power picks to secure the Zion Rakan at second rotation, but now is where things get terrifying for the side of OG. We've talked about it before, let's say it again. Elise with an 80 damage solo laner is a terrifying dive threat makes uh, Alfari's job very difficult, depending on what he's going to pilot. Maybe he goes for uh, something like his, his cannon. Mm, with the least locked in as we enter the second band phase, you can see some of the other junglers taken off the board, not wanting to deal with Cold's Olaf here. Wanting to set up an early game success here for Kire. Of course, only his second game on stage with this team. First game, a wild success, as Shock's mentioned on the desk. Don't want to overrate it too quickly, but don't want to underrate it either. Have to see what he looks uh, like up against a veteran jungler like Cole, the guy who has had a fantastic year thus far. Nautilus, though, taken off the board. I think no surprises there. Incredibly powerful engaged support. Yeah, so the game plan still seems to be the same from Origin right now. They're trying to take power away from Hansama and Gorilla and make sure that they get the commanding 2v2 into bot side, so denying things like that Nautilus. I don't know if they're going to double down and again try to take away either an ADC pick or another support pick, or maybe there's something that they're really terrified coming out of that top lane, or, or maybe Alfari has a special pick that just doesn't work there. Well, Akali is potentially one of those options. The Shroud of giving her a lot of safety in a lot of different situations. Maybe limiting the safe, defendable picks against what is an otherwise terrifying dive duo. But Akali, a champion that we see a ton in the LCK, but really not picking up any popularity in LEC since the nerfs. Has been hit, of course, repeatedly since we saw her at MSI. So uh, Ezreal Sivir still available here for Han Sama uh, since he lost his Lucian as well as his Zaya. And of course, those aren't necessarily the champions that you think of. When you think of Hansama, it is the Dravens, it is the Lucians, it's the more aggressive lane champions. And they're going to give Hansama the luxury of last pick as they reveal that Tom Kench will be the support going into the hands of Gorilla. Not quite uh, the bastion of safety that it once was, but a much stronger, I think, damage threat in the early to mid game. And it feels like until we see these last two picks that it's going to be a, uh, a pretty split map between both these teams. A lot of resources, attention for Origin's bot side of the map, a lot of uh, resources and attention to Misfit's top side of their map because they have the likes of the Aurelia, the Aatrox, as well as the Elise. I think it'd be really cool if we saw the Jax. Yeah, an interesting option, of course. Gets a lot of pseudo tankiness, can be decent in the team fights, and also just an incredible split pusher once he has a few items under his belt. Very long cooldowns early in the game, though. Means that you have to be careful not to burn too much or get dove. And the Jacks coming through once again. Will it actually get locked in here? I want to see it. Oh, Alfari so, Jax. This was it. This was the secret weapon. I was very curious about the rise. It looks like it is going to be the Jax. Um, I've heard that it can have decent matchups into Aatrox. I don't know the matchup that Ooh. intimately. So we'll try to pay attention and see yeah. where the windows, where he picks his moments are. 
And, and Frostgarden, this is very different from what we've expected from Misfits. Remember that the Misfits formula in the past was bot lane, bot lane, bot lane, bot lane. This game is not going to be about bot lane. It is an Ezreal and a Tom Kent. You could not have a more defensive bot lane in the game. On the opposite side, though, the solo laners are incredibly powerful. They need to be set up to be empowered by Kira in the early game. I want, I want to see what Misfits can do with this. This is such a different look for the team. Yeah, and it is all eyes on Kira and what he's going to do uh, as a very aggressive jungler. On the other side for Origin, you have the classic Jarvan Rise. Think about that point and click CC. It offers such a free flag and drag. And then once you give your attention to Nuke Duck, once he's unlocked to start roaming around, then you start making the most of your priority that Patrick and Mithy are going to give you on the likes of the Zyrakhan. So I feel like both game plans are pretty obvious and it should be about tracking these early game junglers. And that's what we heard from Ender, right? The focus on mid lane, the focus on Nuke Duck, one of the best players in the LEC, freeing him up to take over the map. Have to find out what the option will be for both of these lineups. You can see the team comps behind them, the Zaya Imrakan in the hands of Patrick and Mithya. Bot lane, we've had our eyes on more and more lately. And on the opposite side, we expected them to be matched, but no, Misfits willing to take the back foot with the Ezreal Tom catch and put their focus elsewhere. The crowd is ready. It is match three, week two, day two. Let's see who comes out on top. Origin versus Misfits. Now, this is a matchup that two years ago, I would have had very, one very strong opinion. It would have been uh, OG falling apart. It would have been Misfits dominating. Last split, it would have been OG dominating, Misfits falling apart. Maybe now we can set a new story. As both these teams go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Origin, of course, behind in the record overall. 1-2 to Misfits 2-1. And already we see an early aggressive invade coming in. Just a battle for Vision, trying to track Kirei in the early game. And I like this because, once again, you talk about Elise early game, you're talking about tower dives, you're talking about a lot of people dying if Kirei gets to have his way. And I think it's very different responsibilities for both oh these junglers. Oh, oh, that was impressive. Origin fans. You guys are killing it. There's, there's Woo girls, there's Ah boys, and there's Origin fans. I like it. Let's go OG fans out in force. That's startling. We'll, we'll link you guys our YouTube for vocal warm-ups, though, because I'm worried about your guys' voices after yeah. that one. <laughs> Drink some tea. <laughs> We'll see if the cheers are worthwhile, what's going to happen here. For now, the bot lane leashing will give away a decent amount of information over to the side of OG on top of that early ward being placed. Cold, if he's smart, should be able to track this pathing with relative ease. Uh, Patrick and Mithy do need to be a bit careful here um, if they just come in and immediately start pushing, because there is always that worry that maybe they get, okay, never mind, Elise is like, yeah, Elise nope, is like, blue nope directly we're to leaving red. you alone. Also, oh. Hansama, watch out, the flash burned instantly. Oop. Excellent start, Mithy, the block by the creeps. Screw that, look at the contest over red. Cold going in, but he's quite low. Is he just gonna try to smite steal here? Kira is walking towards the bush. Ooh, a game is afoot. He walks into the bush, he sees Cold. Level two, of course. Elise probably has W and Q, so not the biggest threat, but still going to walk away. Cold burning so much time, he's not gonna get anything, and Kira was, you know, a couple pixels away from not seeing that coming. Excellent heads up play from Kira right there to read that, okay, they've put Vision down on the red buff. I'm gonna go immediately from blue towards my red. There's no way that Cold's going to control this. And I was talking about responsibility, what these team or what these junglers are doing for their team. Cold actually just wants to track Kira. He's gonna wait a couple of levels and then he can start applying pressure to Rise if that's where he wants to gank. But otherwise, his, his primary function was to just figure out where this guy is going to go, where he's going to attack. And Kira beat him to that punch. So is it okay that he spent so much time trying to steal that away to ultimately get nothing? No, is he's that clearly on the back. All right, well, I was just checking, like, how, how much are we willing to sacrifice to figure out where Kira is on the map? The That's only, what I'm trying to understand. The only bright side is he has uh, early game mid-priority here. You can see that Fevin shoved underneath his tower, so it's not like uh, Kira can immediately start putting his face in Cold's jungle and, like, taking things away from him. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, like, the saving grace, but he still is behind tempo in the jungle. Difficult to say the least. This is good for Mithy. Again, they're still tracking Kirei. That's now Ward on the red buff. Drive by Scryer's Bloom, making the most of uh, Zai and Rakan's push. So now going to be able to quite comfortably keep that pressure up. You can see they're not too scared whatsoever. In the mid lane, we still have a bit of aggressive trading. Febivin going in, trying to make use of the passive there. Has the Conqueror as well, so those extended trades very much in his favor. But the phase rush on the opposite side does mean it's going to be a bit difficult for him to 
keep those trades going in his favor. And I like Nukeduck posturing down to the bottom side of the wave, knowing that Elise is on the top side on that ward, so not going to give the opportunity for that cocoon to land. And Kyrie has been tracked all game long. Placed or spotted out by that ward, now spotted out by the Squires Bloom. Cold sitting away. They know that this is coming. Are they going to go for it, though? Cold is incredibly low. One combo could come through. Now spots Kyrie out. A lot of safety there. Cold probably can't contest this overall, but could look to smite it away. And this is just in response uh, to the wave being stacked up here. I'll hold it, though, as a fight looks like so it might as. break out. The ward now spotting so as. Cold has to be careful. One knockup going to come through. Alfari moving down. Kyrie taking control of the jungle. You see 24 to 16. Two camp advantage over to Kyrie. Wants to make it three as he passes down to the wolves. Is going to think better of it. And the wolves, of course, not available. But now Nuke Duck has to be careful. The pressure on the top side is spilling over. Kyrie not going to commit, though. He will take his first back here. Cold has, of course, already backed now. And will move to the bottom side to secure He's like a, like a viper just looking for these strikes. Moving forward. Wants to land the CC. Is he going to land it on Nuketuck? Buys a bit of time. Forces the flash out from Nuketuck. Great patience there. Coming in on the stun from Aurelia to make sure that Nuketuck has to flash. Both of them out of mana, but Nuketuck under tower going to make it a lot difficult to CS. Alfari biting off a bit more than he could chew. Had the level advantage. Thought he might win that trade, but a lot of damage coming in from Atron. No, hold up. I want to compliment uh, two good things from the teams. The, the amount of pressure and like tempo that Kyrie has set in this jungle, yeah, it didn't translate onto the scoreboard, but this guy was everywhere. And in that same vein, credit to Origin. They successfully tracked Kyrie. He tried for, it looked like a, a dive, a gank into the mid lane. He invaded, he placed down Vision, and at every single point, Origin knew exactly what he was doing. And now Cold's moving down to the bottom side. He's behind a jungle experience, but still, of course, a threat with the flag and drag there. We'll move back to the Krugs. The knockup not going to connect. Mithy now forced to retreat. Hot Sama and Grill, an incredibly difficult lane to attack once again. We take a look at what the pressure has earned so far from the side of Misfits. You can see Soaz pretty comfortably sitting on a CS advantage as he was able to pressure there in the lane. And now it appears trying to freeze the wave along his topside tower. Difficult spot for Afari to be in, to be certain. So the fun game that you play with top lane, especially with Elise, and we didn't get a chance to touch on it just because Kyrie was moving so quickly through the, the jungle, is that you build up a slow push, and then you try to crash two to three tower, or two to three waves onto the tower. And the thing is, is Alfari saw that coming. Duck. He's here that again. Connects. Oh, the cocoon lands too. Nuke Duck needs to get up, but he's not gonna get the chance. First blood for Febavin. Kyrie is everywhere. You can't kill him. You can't get rid of him. This is like the worst type of spider that's just like in your house, you're like, it, it must be burnt down. Like you have to move. You hit the web, it gets attached to your hand. You're like, how did this happen? How possibly could we be in this situation? You can tell who's actually brave when you watch them walk through a spider web by how they actually freak out. Like, oh. No one's that brave, Frostgrunt. And uh, now for Nuke Duck. First gank burns the flash, second gank gets the kill. The synergy between Febivin and Kira here is, has been excellent. Uh, I mean, yeah, credit to Febivin, he helped set it up, but oh, I... Cold might be next. No, Kyrie. I frankly feel that this is like all Kyrie. Like, the amount of pressure and the amount of plays that he's thrown out in 6 minutes and 40 seconds has been pretty ridiculous. And let's look at how the priority paid off in the draft so far. We got the rise in the mid lane for Nuke Duck. Their first pick hasn't done much. The Zyra Khan on the bottom side has not done much for OG quite yet. Level 6 could change that, but on the opposite side, the solo laners and the Elise are getting work done. All of what Misfits put priority into in the draft is paying off for them so far. Yeah, and Cold can't even enter his jungle. They realize that Kyrie's on that top side of the map. Cold is just trying to uh, protect Nuke Duck here, and he thinks it's, uh, it's from Elise, oh, but it's from Aurelia. Coming in. Febivin wants to get a kill, trying to block a little bit of damage there. Ooh, can he get out? No, the creeps are there. Goes down. Over aggressive from the side of Misfits. Soash is now going to try to push the wave in to stop the freeze. Is Kira going to path around a look for the dive here? You have the ultimate from the Aatrox. A lot of healing if they get the kill. Of course, the revive will be there. Here's Flash. Nuke Duck going to step forward. Flash forward. Going in on the cold walls and one shots him. Goes up. Has to come down. Now trying to path out. Needs to sidestep. Using the spiders to block the overload. It's brilliant from Kyrie thus far. So, so as with the tower. It. This is clean team play from the side of Misfits. Oh, so well done right there. Excellent heads of play. And again, just nothing but compliments to Kyrie. That is ridiculous. The confidence to, oh, to move forward there. We thought the highlight moments might just be coming from a game versus Excel and a bad smite at level one. But no, Kyrie. Continuing to exceed expectations on the map. This guy's a monster. See, He's an animal. He so no vision. Well, I mean, where else would he be backing? That's confidence. This is his second game on the LAC stage. What happens? Sees him, flashes, kills him. That's it. Mate, he was at MSI. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> 
But MSI was full of a lot of subpar regions for us growing. This is all a good region, you know what I'm saying? So, have to consider it. Bevevin, however, biting off more than he can chew once again and getting taken out. Gorilla is not there. <laughs> That's an every man for himself type of situation. That's twice now, though. Febbevin has bitten off more than he can chew. Uh, two missteps there. Oh, and now cold level six as well. Gorilla has to be careful because Hansama has the freedom to get out, but Gorilla with the flash will, but doesn't have really any other options. We can take a look back at the play, and I like the thought here. Oh, did he? Oh, oh no. Oh. Oh no. I take it back. I take it back. Bevan, that was not your fault. Gorilla observers, you told us, but we didn't see. Clip it. Put it on Reddit. That's twice now. That's sad. Anytime Gorilla plays Tom, Tom Kent, Kench, yep. he just screws yep. over his yep. team. He's yep. against a Blitzcrank. He gobbles up Hansama. He eats the hook. He pulls the free for one. <sighs> he hits the blast cone there. Well, we'll. This is like his subtle way. It's like, if I just play Tom Kench poorly, they'll never make me play <laughs> I <laughs> never have to play. Moose, did you see that? I don't think I should be playing this champion, just saying. To be fair, you can hit a blast gun with any champion, though, so we'll... Explicitly Tom Kench. It's an oopsie. They'll review it later. We'll let it go. We'll see if any more come through. For now, though, it does mean that things are starting to go back into the favor of OG. You can still see a small gold lead in the favor of Misfits, but this bot lane pressure means a tower plate should go down in favor of the Origin squad. Now only a 600 gold difference between them. Um, checking in on itemization, the fact that Rise now has lost chapter as well as the tier, it should be a lot easier to compete for these waves. Does need to respect that there's still so much 2v2 pressure from Aurelia and Elise, which is oh, coming in right here. now. The 2v2 is now ready to get started. The stun does connect, but they're going to back off. Tom oh, no. here too, though. There goes the ulti. The cocoon not going to land because the flash out comes through. Nuke Duck's still alive. He's living Gorilla there to save the day. Trying to make up for past mistakes as Bevevin will walk away with his life. I'm sorry for the blast cone. I got you on this one, brah. Hop inside. <laughs> <laughs> now Mythian wants to turn it back, though. Knowing Bevevin has burned a lot of his major cooldowns, the flash just moments away from coming back. Do they have the timer here? Are I going to opt to back off? So Disaster kind of averted there on both sides. And I, I love this game. We're 11 minutes in. It's only two kills to two. It's a 1K goal lead to Misfits, but I love the amount of action we've been seeing across the map. It just feels like a uh, textbook that everyone's got their pro, pro views opened up for both these junglers because that's really been the name of this game so far. Hopefully it starts to shift more towards the origin camp, especially for how vocal our audience has been for them now that they have access to those ultimates, the realm watch, the cataclysms, and they should feel uh, a bit happier, a bit more confident to look for aggressive plays and not just reactive plays. Absolutely the case. And of course, the later we go, uh, the less the Elise means overall will become that kind of assassin. Let's try to get things done, whereas Cold can have that massive team fight impact. Relatively defensive with the Cinder Hulk. If you land down a bit of poke here into the mid lane, the bot lane feels like a really strong point for OG right now. Of course, relatively overall, Hansama is just kind of forced to clear out this waves and just based on champions alone, isn't able to have too much of an impact. I actually think this is kind of an interesting swap here. Um, mid obviously being the most important point on the game because not only is Rift Herald in play, but you also have a Mountain Dragon. And without Nuke Duck having access to his Flash and how much attention he's getting there, the fact that Origin rotated Mithy and Patrick here um, to have control, but also protect Nuke Duck. So I was running. Are they going to try to extend the play? The ultimate's already coming in from how far. He's got those extra resistances. Trying to burn him down, ticking out, running out of time. Good amount of healing coming in there from that final Q. But will be forced to retreat. And you can see how far he just bits and pieces, but the, just the per level scaling combined with the Conqueror from Jack still makes him a very powerful threat. And Misfits need to be much more careful about where they're overextending here for these skirmishes. Because again, it's not just Nuke Duck's Flash, but it's the fact that he is the TP. Uh, and so Origin know that they can play top side of the map with the numbers advantage. So really smart uh, lane swap here to allow some of this aggressive, proactive play that we just saw in the last 30 to 45 seconds. Absolutely. 1k gold lead still, though, for Misfits. And I think the thing that it's kind of terrifying is how much rally can get done with so little offensive items. Just the phage and double longsword. It's probably building towards that Tiamat looking to match the wave clear that Ryze has in the side lane. I mean, as long as he doesn't have flash, she doesn't necessarily need the Tiamat to compete with it because he just <laughs> needs to respect that Elise could be there and that he can die. So at least for the next few minutes, um, Tiamat doesn't even matter at this point to match the wave clear. Good insight. Iceborne, I see. This is the thing. Is I respect Ezreal Tom Kench oh, as a bot lane. Alone. Nuke Duck, getting bullied this game. But when you build Iceborne Gauntlet first, I just, I don't like it. Now Fari, 
Getting too aggressive on top side, taking that. So the nice thing about Iceborne Gauntlet first is it at least gives you A, utility, which he's using now. Um, nice. But B, it helps out with your wave clear because you get a bit of the splash damage, um, whereas that's something that Ezreal really lacks. So it keeps him safer. Being moved into the mid lane helps out a little bit. I'm just a guy who likes to see champions kill champions, not champions kill creeps. So it's always a struggle for me. But I respect the decision, especially if it's used to chase down an unruly member of the OG lineup. And no one's taken a dragon yet. No one's taken a tower yet. No one's taken the Rift Herald. So it has been a relatively slow game. Kiri has to be careful. Flashes out there. Now Nuketuk off to the side, dueling. Febivin, the Rumble comes out. No CC left, so he's just going to be able to walk away there. And Febivin now needs to retreat. Seeing the remaining members of OG descend upon him. But a lot of posturing, a lot of threatening of these big engages, but no one able to convert into a kill quite yet. And we're now fighting for priority, although hold that. Mickey wants to fight for a pick. Mithy definitely really wants to kill that Ezreal, and I respect it, but will not be able to quite yet, consistently forcing out the Arcane shift there. Just getting down a bit of damage. Nuketuk staying in this lane, but needs to be careful. I think he's hoping that the wave is just going to get hard shoved in because they assume that he's backed. He doesn't need to be careful. He knows he's being careful. He's like, Aurelia and uh, Elise can kill me at any point. I need to just play back, and I'm literally playing tug of war with these minion waves. Um, Origin and Misfits are both kind of looking for the big pick so they can rotate into a Rift Herald, into a Mountain Dragon. You can see that both these teams want these monster objectives, but they want to make sure that they're picking the right moment to take them. Absolutely. Now, as we'll get spotted out, of course, there is Vision in the pit, so Misfits will have the opportunity to respond. Multiple members on the top side. The TP for Aurelia does not exist because she's taken Ignite. And uh, look at Nukeduck. He's backed all the way into the jungle. He's actually even walking towards the mid lane to grab the incoming wave and make sure that he's close for rotation. But it looks like Origin just beat Misfits to the punch on this rotation and get the Rift Child without any contest. And honestly, just a very good play overall from OG to get that without losing much of anything. They will spot out the Mountain Drake. This will be the trade. Now it's a matter of how much can the Herald get done. It's immediately summoned on the top side of the map. Does so I want to try to contest this one. Plating is already down, so Harold not quite as effective as it might have been earlier in the game. Feminine even backing off, not interested in any more tower damage instead. May look for the reset, now returns back bot side as OG are going to try to break this top lane tower. It looks like they will be successful to do so. Soas does not want to step forward. And now the question that I really have is uh, how hard does Jax scale comparatively to Aatrox? And we know that both these champions are absolutely terrifying as the game goes on, especially in dueling scenarios. Both of them can also uh, find windows to play in the 5v5. But I actually don't know the answer of who outscales who. It's also hard because it's really hard to lock down a target on the enemy team. You got the Tom Kench, you got the Ezreal, there's a lot of dashes across the board. A lot of immobile champions, though, potentially for Aatrox to get on top of if the Zai does get caught out. We'll have to see, Frostgarden. It's going to be a learning experience. We'll, we'll invite Heshinchin on the desk next time, and he can tell us exactly which champions are way too OP against Jax, and, you know, exactly what point Jax should 1v5 the game. Well, so far, he's down in CS, so that's not feeling very good, although this no, is, 30. I believe, the second time that we've seen Jax taken into Aatrox. True. Check across the board, however. Gold still in favor of Misfits. Now committing three members here. Kyrie trying to hide out of vision. Han Sama starting to feel more and more confident as we get further. Of course, has a red elixir running. He's got a spider behind him. I think it's the bigger thing. True. Spider, catfish, boy. Ooh, wait. Here's the question. Yumi Ezreal is Catboy. Tom Kench Ezreal could also be Catboy. It'd be, you know, because he's Catfish. I'm just saying, we have a, a problem with our new monikers. No. It's Ooh. fine, though. Ooh. Not quite. I thought for sure that was going to do a lot of damage, but did not land. I was more excited about your conversation about, like, the Eddie <laughs> Tom Kench nickname. We need a name for every pairing. We write fan fiction now. We're giving up casting. You're not supposed to. You have a SoundCloud. <laughs> I've got a fan fiction. We don't talk no, about wait. this. We just talked about it. Now they're going to look for it, Roscoe. Hope it's not under your real name. That's what I'll hope for your sake. All right, Misfits. It's a slow game, guys. These teams are both very tactical, generally, when they have control you over the You say it's slow. Everyone's hunting. They just haven't made it connect. Nope. Now, Gorilla bringing in Ezreal, the most fearsome of predators. Focus, though, is on the mid lane tower, and they have so many members here, they might just be able to grab it. The trade is that Zaya's off to the bottom side. A lot of damage on a nuke duck. Not going to get the follow-up CC. Alfari going over the wall. But the tower's still alive. In the meantime, Patrick has got the bot lane tower, so a purely positive trade for Misfits. They will even up the gold difference between the teams. Positive there for Origin, the fact that they took the tower, and now Origin are just going to hard force this one back. Don't think it's going to mean that the tower's exactly going to go down because Han Sama has access to the ultimate, but um, that was Misfits putting in a lot of resources and not getting anything back for it. And now they're fishing once again. 
Big game hunter right here. Right now, the game is so as They're gonna go over the wall. The flash is there. Mithy wants to leap in. Ooh, the double dash bringing it through on the three. The fancy footwork is there. The damage, however, is not. It looks pretty, but not a lot's gonna get done. But again, meanwhile, while all of this is happening, Patrick got all of the wave on the bot lane, pushed down that tower, now gets a free wave in the mid lane, and massive chip damage on this mid structure. So the real winner here is uh, Patrick in all of this. Yeah, just continuing to pick up so much solo gold, one and a half items. Mithy. One thing that I like about Mithy and Patrick, it's something that first talked about Euphoria. You'll hear us talk about Euphoria a lot. We host it. That's how it goes. Uh, is he talked about how they were willing to try things, and that's what we've seen from Mithy this game. He continuously jumps onto Ezreal. Yes, the Ezreal ease out every single time, but all it takes is one time where they mess up. Just skill that, check them. Just skill check them. Every time it's up, if you don't need it for something else, just poke them. Just see what they're going to do, because they don't have any kill threat on you. you That's see not that how that duo works. All the time with like Skarners, when everyone has QSS or flash up, like the Skarner players just won't do it, because in a perfect world, like they'll flash away. They'll QSS immediately. I won't get it. Just try. Just see. Who's awake? Who ate their Wheaties? To be fair, uh, Skarner and Pale cool down much longer than the... Don't bring that up. <laughs> it's fine. Just push the button, folks. Make them Captain Jacket. If they're not good at pushing buttons, they're going to die. That's, that's how we want you to play the game. Take the risk. Might be objectively wrong sometimes, but do it. You know, live a little. And now we've kind of split into this 1-3-1. One, one. We've got Jax in the side lane. We've got Ryze in the side lane. Both teams kind of set up to do that. The only downside is Fevin doesn't really have the TP, but it's the trio of Patrick, Mithy, and Cold versus Gorilla. He took that really Kira. soft. You're like, the only difference is, is he kind of doesn't maybe have a teleport. He doesn't have a teleport. Kinda the 1-3-1 one, one, uh, macro advantage is to Origin. That said, if Aurelia and Aatrox get <laughs> super far ahead and just have immediate kill pressure, then Obviously, the TP doesn't mean anything for Origin. They're literally just using it to run away from the stronger side lanes, but that's not the case right now. The more we talk about this game, the more I feel like it's all those trashy arcade games that you see. And sorry, guys, this reference is a little out of left field, but American bars. You know, we've got like Bass Fisher, we've got Big Game Hunter. It's literally just both teams throwing skill shots, hoping to hit somebody so they can get a kill, but neither team's able to find purchase. The good news is, is that Misfits are going to be able to find this Infernal Drake. Now, you could say that it's uncontested, but it's not because the mid lane is what's being contested here. Gorilla, though, coming back to defend that tower, and Origin not able to get anything. Except that was the better decision from Misfits, at least in the short term, uh, in my opinion, because they didn't account for Hansama being able to clear the way from the ultimate. All Origin got was some chip damage on the mid tower, True. and that's still then an Infernal and now a Mountain in the back pocket of Misfits. And once again, there are four champions who will gladly use that Infernal. You can see full damage coming to Kiri. He's flashing forward. He wants to kill Mithy. He's going to get locked up. He is going to get pulled out. Now, the ultimate does go the wrong way from the Zaya, but will still manage to survive Alfari's TP forced as well. That is absolute beast mode there from Kiri. He flash cocooned that. I mean, he did get the kill, but that's like, that's bold. <laughs> I don't know what it did, but it looked really cool, folks. That's, I mean... <laughs> use the flash. Once again, I like that he's willing to take the risks. This is the thing that I look for in new players. Not afraid to be that. And remember, this is like the newest guy on the lineup. So the fact that he's the one that's willing to flash forward is quite impressive. I mean, I, I totally understand the idea of being like, you know, he's new to the lineup. You don't expect this experience. He did play in the TCL for like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, He yeah. played in the TCL for a long time. He's played on some of the biggest stages in the world. Like, That's true. I, I expected Kyrie to come in flying very high right now. He was a very hyped pickup for this Misfits lineup. And you can uh, see why with this early game now, can he transition <laughs> through this mid game into late game success? They're going to say, you can see why with that cocoon. <laughs> no, hard pivot. It goes wide. Anyway, Patrick and Mithy continuing to be a dominant 2v2 threat. Fevin doesn't really want to stay in that lane against them. Has no reason to. We'll let the wave pull back. And you look at the replay. Ooh, you feel like if that ulti was fired the correct way, that things may have turned. But Patrick pushing too many buttons at the same time, trying to, trying to get out. It's been a, a fight over this mid lane, because again, this is kind of the, the major road uh, bump between both these teams, especially for Misfits, whose composition is really set up for picks, not just because they have the Elise, but also the mobility of that uh, Tom Kench. Ooh, and a lot of damage down on the new Duck Saw. It's immediately going to pop the ultimate. He needs to get the knock if he wants to stop. He's going over the wall. He's chasing. That's a lot of movement speed. Oh! oh the Flash still had it. He didn't even want to try to do the math. Uh-uh. No trigonometry here, not trying to dodge anything. Well, an exciting moment. And I, I love that Suaz is willing to be aggressive there, dashing over the wall. Doesn't have a flash of his own. That could have been very different if he did. OG have to be careful. Nuketuck getting focused so many times in this game. 
trying to control over the top side of the map. 23 minutes into the game, Baron up and available. The later we get, the more likely it is that one of these teams can take it. But it's more likely at this stage, it feels, for Misfits, given that they have the mountain, they have the sustained damage of the Aurelia. Ezreal, not the best aim, uh, taker, to be fair, but if he completes the Blade of the Rune King, that will change. And again, as this map starts to open up more, um, that it's more about running towards second tier towers. I'll hold it though, so as and Kyrie. It, it becomes very terrifying for Origin on a dark map because of that pick potential. We talked about the Abyssal Voyage, um, the Elise. You can now see how much damage and how much kill pressure Soaz has, especially if he finds you first and you're not suspecting walking around a corner. So this mid tower falling um, feels really good for Misfits composition because then they get so much more access into Origin's jungle. They can start uh, denying a lot of that vision, creating more dark pockets and trying to abuse more windows for pick. And it's honestly incredible that you're 24 minutes into the game and that the mid lane tower for either side has yet to go down. We've Bo just parked our ADCs here. They're both farming. Farming, though, going in favor of Han Sama. And no, ladies and gentlemen, it will not be a Blade of the Rune King. That's the coward's build. He said, Iceborne Gauntlet, that's enough of the defensive items for me. I'm going Gunblade. And that's what I love to see. I love Gunblade Ezreal. You one-shot so many champions, they do not expect the burst that you can put out. Yeah, uh, I think Crown Shot is also the other Ezreal that really likes to play more on that AP edge. I'm curious what the uh, next item after Gunblade is going to be for Hansama, if he's going to lean even further into the AP. Ludens. You're talking about the burst damage potential. And again, if it's about pick, it's about that cocoon lands, and then suddenly Ezreal, immediately the W, the auto attack, the Q. You just delete someone. Has to wait a little bit longer, but nice to have an item lead, of course, over Patrick for now. Close to finishing that third item. Only the BF sword on the opposite side, and now Fari. Secretly waiting, hunting, looking for an opportunity. And the mid lane focus. They're slowly chipping it down. Now it's Misfit's turn. So Misfits have been winning in the side lanes. Aurelia and Aatrox both got the tower down. Um, they seem to be winning in their 1v1s, at least in some of the trades that we've gotten to peek at during this game. Um, and slowly but surely, yes, the mid lane is going to fall to origin, but oh, Hansama and Gorilla tower is gone. have been doing a good job holding it. Oh, cold, locked up. Spiraling slowly, walking forward, not going to get anything else. Both teams... I. We're waiting for that one mistake, Frostgren. We're waiting for that one person to step out of the way. They don't have to. Um, both teams are waiting for when their champions want to fight. You're either looking for level 16, so you have all points in your ultimates. You're looking for uh, core itemization for Misfits. It's on champions like Aurelia and Aatrox when they'll feel really strong. Whereas on Origin, you're waiting for Zaya's itemization and Jax's itemization. So yeah, both teams are, are playing it slow. And you can criticize, you know, maybe they should take more onus. Maybe they should uh, force more fights. but. Both teams probably feel fine in this situation of like, mm. just get me to that next item. Then we'll look for our fights. Get me to the perfect moment. So is it just that three items that we're looking for for Zaya? Maybe the Spear of Shojin coming in for Jax could also be a GA, depending on how far he wants to take it. I think it'll be Spear. Mm. Once again, the answer that I want to hear, Frostgren. Having Counter-Strike up indefinitely in fights. It's an incredibly powerful feature of that item. You can just keep spamming it out. Here comes the big flank. OG setting up to break the tower, but Misfits know that this is the next play, so they were ready to collapse. OG, though, one step ahead in the mind games, know that that was the next play for Misfits in response to their next play, and so they will now back off. Playception. Playception. Hmm. Ooh, I like this. No. Didn't like that they auto-attacked the Baron. They were no. never going to do Baron there. As soon as they saw that it was warded, now if they get priority at this mid lane, they can set up a pick because you have to suspect that they're doing the Baron, which is oh. why they're hiding around this corner. Ooh, goes over the wall. So as now fishing for Nuketuck, immediately going to use the ultimate. Tom Catch is coming as well. Nuketuck wants to make it out of safety. The knockup is not going to connect. Nuketuck, oh, just barely living. Seraphs is there. Ezreal ulti. Not up quite yet. So as walking forward. Eyes on the Ezreal. We are seconds away from the attempted snipe. Is he going to look for it? Or he'll hold it. It's not worth it. He didn't know if he walked all the way back or if he had already backed and gotten to base. Ooh, meanwhile, but meanwhile, the trade pick is there as Fevman is immediately taken down. Kirei cannot function in that situation, but Soaz is there to dish out the damage. No ultimate available. Kirei next. OG starting to pick the team apart. There is the ultimate coming in for the Ezreal, but Soaz has been locked up and taken out with no ultimate and no kills to find the reset. That is the double dropping instantly. OG are taking control of the top side. An inhibitor is now set to fall for the Misfits lineup. And that is the dam breaking right there. You saw it on Soaz's face, just head in hands. If he was able to hold there. If Misfits had survived, then they could style out Origin, look for another attempted pick on Nuketuck in a side lane. But because they fall down, it's now the door kicked open by Origin. 
massive fight win coming in for OG. 2K gold lead now, but that's not what's important. The pressure point, Alfari. The pressure point that's coming out for Origin on that top side of the map is going to make every dragon easy to take for the next five minutes and might make this Baron attempt a little bit more likely. I think it's much more about the control that it gives you over this Baron pit. And again, we're to that point where after the next back, everyone's going to have that itemization. So this kind of, you know, back and forth, posturing, eyeing each other, who's going to get a pick, who's looking for an actual fight. I think we're going to see a teams much more keen to look for the full fights now. Look back at how this one happened. Of course, we had our eyes on the bottom side of the map when this started, but beautiful engage comes in from Mithy, and you just don't get a push button sometime. We don't need to watch anymore. It's too gruesome, to be quite honest. Kirei, though, of course, taking a lot of damage there, just barely able to make it out. Did not have to burn Flash in the exchange, but this is doing what they can to hold on to some of this control. It makes it much easier to get priority now because um, Misfits have to deal with the super creeps up into the top lane, so there's much more attention from Origin just to go mid to hard force that lane and then start cutting into this Baron and laying down the vision. Ooh. And look at the swings this game. You can see... Very interesting story as Misfits were in control for most of the early game. It evens out. Misfits take control once again. And then a massive shift on the back of that last play. So as waiting in the brush is going to get the knock up onto Patrick. That's going to be big, but there's no follow up. They don't want to take the risk there with Fevivin and Gorilla focused on clearing out the mid lane. They also don't have eyes on Nuke Duck. He's shadowing on the bottom side of the team, ready to realm warp in if necessary. Spear of Shoujin has now been completed on Jax as well as the Trinity Force, and he has both his resistances, both the Ninja Tabi as well as um, the Magic Resistance available to him, and TP. So I'm curious how much damage and how much attention Alfari is going to drag down here to open up OG to play around the pressure point from the Super Creeps up the top lane, their priority go over mid lane, and that Baron setup. Oh, oh, oh Kire. Is he going to try and make it out of this one? The knockup is there. It's knocking up the Tomcats. They're keeping him locked down. It's a messy fight in the midst of everything. Kira is still going to make it out, but Fevivin is not. No, can he get it done? Mithy in trouble now. Fevivin's still alive. Can he get the stun? The knockup is there. Fevivin is still alive. I can't believe it. He's surviving. He got the triumph. He's so incredibly low. There's no way he makes it out of this one. Alfari now leaping to safety. That's the double kill for the Jacks. Soaz trying to hold on, but OG, oh, they have too many members left standing, and they dominate the fight. Ah, oh, Origin just overwhelmed Misfits right there. They then immediately run it in the top lane, flashing over the wall. They've got the super creeps. They have the entry into the base point. They're going to end it. The second they found their prey, the second they finished that hunt, they knew that it was time to end the game. A massive team fight win for Origin. A slow, controlled game from both sides. But the second Origin see weakness, they are not afraid to capitalize, and they will close out and take the game versus Misfits. Just the smallest margin of error against the likes of our top teams. Origin were given an inch and they ripped everything open. Two mistakes. Ultimately, were what decided the game. The mistake on the top side where Origin capitalized, where Nuke Duck managed to survive on the bottom side. And that final fight, Kire caught out. It looks okay for a moment. If you're like me and you've got your eyes on Fevivin, but as you zoom out and take a larger look at the fight, you can see how much Origin are dominating. And surviving a very aggressive early game. Uh, credit to Nuke Duck, you know, for the amount of pressure that was thrown at him, it wasn't able to be translated into any sort of snowball. Like, Kire did his best. He threw everything at the kitchen sink at that. He was getting so much done on that Elise. Uh, but Nuke Duck recognized when his flash was down, when he needed to play safely, when Origin needed to uh, swap their duo into that mid lane, play around their TP, just very clever map movement from Origin to kind of stop the bleeding that happened in early game. I completely agree, and when you look at Nuke Duck, oftentimes he can be that highlight player, he can be the Zed versus Cassio in that matchup versus Caps, and he can be the Rise in this game where, yes, he's suffering, yes, he's getting focused, yes, he's getting picked on, he might drop in the early game, but then in the mid game, became such a reliable force for the team, and how much pressure he absorbed. How much damage he was doing in that last fight. He chunked Kirei. And Rise, one of those champions where, uh, yeah, if you can't put him to the ground and end the game before he gets a chance to scale up, he is a massive threat. And it's one of those things where it's really hard to track, you know, what Nuke Duck actually brings to a team. With a player like Caps, it's quite obvious. He's so flashy. Yeah, he outplays people. That's that's his thing. Uh, stability there for how much pressure and resources he was able to absorb and then still bring it back when his team needed uh, him. You know, forcing those picks, forcing those fights in the jungle. And I got to give some praise to the bot lane as well. Patrick and Mithy, of course, mostly role players, I feel like up until those few final fights, just they 
They pushed out bot lane, they held mid lane in the 1-3-1, one, one. that's kind of what you do. But also the fact that Minty was so consistently willing to fish for those big plays, to find those opportunities. And we take a look back at this one. It's more about the mid lane, however, in the early game and why we are so quick to give Kyrie praise in this game because this has been repeated clean plays as he ganked around the mid lane. And uh, Origin knew what they were getting into. It was pretty pretty clear. I don't think there were any surprises that came out from this draft. I think both teams had a good idea about what was going to happen. But Origin said, you know, it's fine. We can give Misfits power picks like the Aatrox and the Aurelia. And we have faith that they won't be able to snowball with those picks and close out games. Just such a clean fight. So many threats diving into the back line of Misfits. They had no choice but to respond. And it left Patrick and Nuke Duck. And to a certain degree, Alfari untouched. You can see him getting low here. But... Power, Spear, Shoujin, Jax, as well as a bit of Triumph healing means it's just not a champion you're able to shut down in that fight if you don't commit resources to killing him. And it felt like it never even came down to the, the 1v1s of the side lanes. Like, there was a lot of pressure play, but it was still about, like, constant moving around the map, constant uh, acquiring of information and what you were going to do with the information from both sides. And very back and forth game, I think the uh, gold graph pretty much perfectly depicts what happened there. That game was, it felt like it was on a knife's edge. Absolutely. And in the early game, we thought that Kyrie might be the deciding factor, ultimately the thing that would put Misfits over the line and not let OG uh, kind of get the chance to play their game. However, as we move later and later in the game, those opportunities became harder and harder to find. And now, we want to know who you think should be key to the player game. It's Alfari, it's Cold, or it's Mithy. You can give us your pick now at LOL Esports. A tough call? I Maybe not. I feel like... I'm going to say Mithy. Would you say I, you're a kind of a cold person? That's what I'm getting. You're a cold. You're going to say cold. You love junglers so much. Uh, I do love junglers. I think that both Mithy and Cold were so responsible for tracking Kyrie. And yeah, Kyrie was still able to get off a lot of plays. But like, think back to all of the offensive vision. Think back to all of the plays, like the two key team fights they started and they finished. And then also tracking that Elise. So, well, we're going to say we vote staff. cold because spoiler alert, we're going to get some insight from him too because Lore is sitting down with Origins Jungler. Thank you, Dracos, and thank you, Cold, for joining me. I want to know your thoughts on that. Who should get player of the game? Uh, probably not me. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I played too well. Uh, I had kind of like an off game. Uh, sometimes that happens, but yeah. Yeah, it's just like a feeling thing. But uh, I, maybe Miffy, he had some good plays. Even though he's really a coin flip raccoon player, like no offense, but he's really a coin flip raccoon player. So sometimes it hits, uh, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, I, I, I feel like we didn't play well. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed with the play. I feel like we showed kind of the same as we, we did yesterday against Fnatic. We just played against the worst teams today and that's why we won. So um, yeah, so a little bit mixed feelings. You say coin flip for Mithy. Who is a reliable player at Origin? Who is a reliable player? The most reliable player. Uh, I mean, let's it's say. not about the players. It's more <laughs> about um, it's more about the champions. It's more of like an intern uh, thing, honestly. I think Miffy is good at Rakan. He just sometimes he like he he feels it too much, so he has to make these sick plays all the time. But yeah, uh, it's just depends on the champions. And that's what makes a clutch player, after all, right? Mm -hmm. So you were talking about champions. I have a question about that because you let Elise open for Misfits when Kire is known to be such an expert on Elise. And then you first pick Rise, mm -hmm. letting Aurelia open. So what was the plan going then? Um, I mean, without going too much into it, we wanted to challenge Misfits a little bit and see uh, what they had prepared for the game. I think we gave them a lot of strong picks, but uh, I don't think we necessarily were scared of giving away like strong picks like uh, Aurelia and Elise uh, for Kyrie. I think Kyrie is like a player that is you have to prepare a little bit for uh, compared to other junglers because he plays some unique champions, like he plays the, the Kindred. He also, I think at, at Worlds, he played uh, a lot of Talia. Um, so he's quite unique. So uh, I, I had no problem with him picking Elise. Uh, it was, it was kind of comfortable for me. Okay, how confident were you going against Misfits today? Uh, I knew if we played like just kind of like this, we would win uh, because I think we're just a better team. But uh, I, again, I'm kind of disappointed because I know, I know what we're capable of if we play better. Um, and if we play better, we should be able to win games like yesterday, for example, against Fnatic. So uh, mixed feelings, but overall, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we won. All right, now, I know we only got two weeks and you didn't play against the, all the teams, but you saw everybody play. So how would you rank Origin right now? Uh, how, I know. how would I rank Origin? I mean, we lost to G2 and Fnatic. Um, so maybe, maybe third. I've, it's so hard to judge because you play one game and then suddenly you are judged by that performance, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, but uh, there's way more to it. 
I'm just I'm excited to see how far we can take it. We right now we just focus one game at a time and and see how it, how it goes and. Uh, Soon ready to clap some NA people. <laughs> Best way to do it. All oh, right, you're doing, going for Rich Fivals next week. So, about that, who are you looking forward to face the most in NA? Um, hmm. I mean, yeah. I, w I always uh, I like to play against all of them, honestly. But for I, I really want to play against Sven from from TSM. We we used to play on a team many many years ago. We actually played on a team together, and we we have been close uh, in all the in the birth of your your gaming career. So um, always a pleasure to play against him. He's 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 a nice guy. That and Mithy against Sven will be something fun to watch. I bet. Now let's take a step back. I've been meaning to talk to you about something for such a long time. Mm -hmm. You ended Spring Split second, and mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the memes on Twitter about the refresh effect. Yeah. The fact that Origin is uh, working with refresh. So I want to know how is refresh helping you on a day to day. Honestly, with a lot of things, uh, for the first time in, in my gaming career, I'm, I'm blessed with being around people that have so much experience in just performance. And uh, they come from real sports. Uh, we have Kasper, who is a former, Kasper Witt, who is a former handball legend in Denmark. Um, so just being able to share some of the thoughts I have about uh, performing, uh, it's it's really huge. Uh, so, I mean, they help with everything. It, f it feels like now I'm, I'm kind of like a professional, whereas before it was, uh, at times it was quite unprofessional, uh, what happened behind the scenes. Um, so I'm just happy that I can focus on what I should focus on, which is the game, uh, and everything else is sorted for us. So um, truly a, a great experience to be uh, at Origin. And you've been working as a player for such a long time now, you saw the evolution, the way teams are made, the way coaching staff evolved. So what can you tell me about maximizing performance and the way coaching staff evolved over the years? Uh, I mean, it's such a complex question, like what is performance? And then it's, it's about you kind of just fulfilling the, the, most perf the most amount of potential you have, which is, how do you do that? Uh, but uh, we we have guys that have tested a lot of stuff, and they're trying to all the time implement new things because it's a performance is, as I said, such a complex thing that you can all the time improve it. Uh, so we are just we're looking at the small details, uh, and it comes from food, it comes from sleep, uh, all of these things. So um, I think it's it's something we will see more and more because. The best players are so close, and it's those little details that will determine who is going to win. Do you feel like you have bad gamer habits to get rid of? Personally, I don't have that bad habits, but uh, I've seen the worst over the years as a, as a gamer for a long time. I've seen how it, how it affects people uh, poorly, um, especially with like late nights, sleep late, wake up, then you're groggy the entire day. Maybe you're spending your, your entire day in, in, your, uh, in your sleeping clothes, but it is that, that we're trying to push away from because we are professionals and we, we want to represent something more than just gaming. We want to represent uh, being a professional athlete. So and that's what we do. You're doing it perfectly already. Thank you very much for all these insights. We're going to take a short break soon, but first, I want to know Schalke 04 versus Fnatic, who's taking the win? They probably, hear you, so be careful. Probably Fnatic, but I kind of hope Schalke will win, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little biased. Let, let's say Schalke. Let's say Schalke. Let's say Schalke. Okay, take it a break, guys.